City, where tonight, heavyweights headline a top card of boxing. Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Rosen, along with Gil Clancy. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this big event here at Madison Square Garden. And Gil, a good crowd, a good boxing atmosphere, and bringing back a lot of good memories here at the Garden. Sam, I've been waiting for this a long time. There's nothing like the electricity of a big fight night at Madison Square Garden. Plenty of heavyweights in the ring, plenty of heavyweights outside the ring. Industry, show business, an exciting night in New York. Heavy, you're not referring to me about heavyweights, are you? Well, Sam... You said it. <laughs> All right, the main event of the evening is what could be termed a showdown uh, for a title shot. You've got number two, Donovan Razor Ruddick, and number three, Michael Dynamite Dokes, and the winner should be in line for a title shot, Gil. Sam, I give both these guys credit for putting their position on the line. Ruddick is the young guy. He's on the way up. Dokes is the experienced guy. I think Ruddick should have an edge, but the one thing I like about Dokes is he's been active, and Ruddick hasn't had a fight since last July. Since his comeback two and a half years ago, Michael Dokes has fought 13 times. At times he's looked good, but at times he's looked slow and, and out of breath. Not at all. All right, for Donovan Razor Ruddick, he is fighting mad. This is the man who is angry that Mike Tyson pulled out last November. He feels he deserved the title shot at the time. Well, he feels that he could be walking around as the heavyweight champion of the world today. Terrible feeling, Sam. What's the key to that fight? The key is that Ruddick is going to have to box Keep, keep uh, Dokes from inside. Keep him on the end of that good stiff left jab. That's what he's going to have to do. Use the legs and the jab. The other heavyweights on the card, two former champions, Bone Crusher Smith and Mike Weaver. But it looks like these are two fighters that are over the hill, Gil. Well, both former champions. The loser of this fight, I think, is going to have to forget about boxing. The winner is going to put himself into position. Here again. Bone Crusher Smith weighed in at 247. That's a lot of weight to carry. Yeah, but again, Sam, he's been the active guy of the two. I always like those active fighters. All right. The big guys are on the card. Also a couple of little guys. WBA lightweight championship with Edwin Rosario defending against Juan Nazario. This is a rematch. Rosario won a couple of years ago. He stopped Nazario. Why should it be any different tonight, Gil? Well, it could be different. He stopped him. It was two and a half years ago. Nazario was just a young, inexperienced kid. He's had two and a half years to pick up experience. It seems to me that Rosario was slipping a little bit. I, I give Nazario a heck of a shot in this fight. Okay, it should be a good night of boxing. I think you'll enjoy it. And now to help guide us through the evening, let's go to Bruce Bay. Thank you, Sam, and good evening, everyone. Heavyweights have played an important role in the history of Madison Square Garden boxing. It all began in 1883 with John L. Sullivan. That was at Madison Square Garden number one on the northeast corner of Madison Square between 26th and 27th Street. In the 1920s, Jack Dempsey was victorious at Madison Square Garden. In the 30s and 40s, Joe Lewis turned this building into his own personal playground. He successfully defended the belt eight different times from 1938 to 1940. 47, when in 47, he stopped Jersey Joe Walcott. And then there was the fight of the century. March 1971, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. Frazier scoring a 15-round decision. Now, tonight, we don't have a heavyweight championship fight for you, but we do have heavyweights on display. And James Bonecrusher Smith is a part of the Madison Square Garden history. Matter of fact, back in 1986, he captured the WBA heavyweight crown with a knockout over Tim Witherspoon in the first round. Let's meet Bone Crusher Smith, 23, 8, and 1. Former heavyweight champion James Bone Crusher Smith began to ponder retirement in July of 1989, when for the first time in his pro career he was knocked out. Donovan Razor Ruddick provided the powerful punches on Bone Crusher's home turf in North Carolina. Bone Crusher's thoughts changed swiftly in February of 1990 when James Buster Douglas shocked the world by knocking out a suddenly vincible Iron Mike Tyson. So now Bone Crusher's focus is back on the heavyweight belt. At 35 years of age, he is well aware that achieving that goal will not be easy, that he is still considered an incredible long shot to even challenge for the throne, and yet that glimmer of hope, that degree of unpredictability intrigues him. Buster Douglas showed the world that you can be an underdog. I don't know if I'm an underdog in this fight or not. I should be. Uh, Buster proved that you can be an underdog, no odds, and come out victorious, be the heavyweight champion of the world. And I feel like that since he did that to Mike Tyson, that all the heavyweights that's out there fighting that's in good condition has a chance 
to win. And that includes me, Mike Weaver, and whoever else is fighting. Smith learned a valuable lesson in the Ruddock fight. He learned that past laurels cannot carry a fighter. He learned that if he accepts a challenge, he must be in shape. For tonight's bout against Mike Weaver, the Bone Crusher has also changed his training techniques. I've been throwing a lot more punches uh, instead of trying to tighten up, loading up on one shot. And uh, we're going to see how, how it works. Uh, I was surprised to see Mike so, so thin up there. And uh, I plan to come in about 235, very strong. Been training up in the mountains. I think my endurance is going to be great. And uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. I think it'll be a short fight. It looked like he's in very good condition. And uh, I'm in very good condition. And uh, two dangerous punchers. And it could be a short fight. Bone Crusher Smith has made his way into the ring. He says any fighter under 45 who's a heavyweight, who's in shape, should get into the ring and go after the title. Now, Mike Weaver also knows about Madison Square Garden because when he was 28 years of age back in 1979, he lost in his MSG debut to Larry Holmes for the WBC Championship. Weaver is now 34-14-1. He prepares for tonight's match. The man they call Hercules, Mike Weaver, has had his share of ups and downs in his 19-year professional career. His greatest moment came in 1980 when he roared from behind to knock out John Tate in Knoxville, Tennessee and capture the WBA heavyweight title. Weaver was clearly behind on the scorecard but knocked out his opponent in the 15th and final round to claim top status in the heavyweight division. Weaver was on top of the world. Since that time, though, Mike Weaver has suffered a series of disappointing losses, including a first-round knockout by Michael Dokes, which ended his short reign as the WBA's heavyweight champion. He was dealt another devastating defeat in April of 1986, when James Bonecrusher Smith dominated him for the opening bell and scored a first-round stoppage. Although Weaver never really fully digested that fight, it still affords him a source of motivation. You know, I never really saw the fight of me and Bonecrusher Smith, but... I believe I, I, I backed in a straight line, and I believe he did hit me. He hit me when I was kind of cold, and, and I never, re never recovered from it, and he just took advantage of me. And I, now, I learned now to, to not be cold and to be loose, and I was tight that day. And he just, you know, he, just, he got me. Is there a possibility that you can use that fight as revenge, or is it too long ago to think about it? I'm using that fight for revenge. I mean, I, I think about that all the time. This is a revenge. This is revenge. I want revenge. So I'm using that for a revenge fight. Mike Weaver, 38 years of age, turned pro in 1972. 19 years as a professional. This could be his final hurrah. Right now, let's go back to Sam Rosen and Gil Clancy. Thank you, Bruce. And the crowd anticipating this first battle of heavyweights. It is scheduled for 12 rounds. It is for another one of those alphabet soups, Gil. WBA America's Heavyweight Championship. Well, there you go, uh, Sam. You know, there's so many championships now, but we do know that it's 12 rounds. And basically, it's a fight for survival. The winner can survive and go on and, and continue fighting. The loser has got to think about wrapping it up. Absolutely. The, the loser of this fight, in my opinion, won't have, number one, in his own mind, he should realize he has to stop. But again, he wouldn't have any... Uh, commercial value as it is. We are set for the introductions. Let's go to ring announcer, Ed Darian. Live from the Big Apple of New York City's Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, Murad Muhammad, Madison Square Garden Boxing, Thomason World Corporation, and Victor Potemkin proudly present the World Boxing America's Heavyweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds and is approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman, and is sanctioned by the WBA Americas, the Honorable Marty Cohen, the Supervisor in Charge. The judges, Barbara Perez, Harold Letterman, and Billy Costello. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Arthur Mercanti. The timekeeper to bell is Cecilio Pedraja. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 247 pounds. Now, this gentleman has 23 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw, with 18 knockouts. 
the former World Boxing Association heavyweight champion, a native of Magnolia, North Carolina, and now residing in Lillington, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, James Bone Crusher Smith. Smith. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the gold trim. He tipped in at an even 211 pounds. This fine gentleman has 34 wins, 14 losses, one draw, with 24 knockouts. He, too, the former World Boxing Association heavyweight champion, a native of Gatesville, Texas, and now residing in Los Angeles, California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBA America's champion, Mike Hercules Weaver. Weaver. WBA rules governing this fight. There is no standing eight count. There is a three knockdown rule in effect. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. You're boxing New York State Athletic Commission rules. I expect a good, clean fight, and I want you to obey my commands. Shake hands now, and God bless you both. Joe Santarpia is the referee, scheduled for 12. Sam, I have two comments to make about this fight. Both of these guys scare me. They both look so strong, and they both look in such good condition. The other comment I have to make is don't blink. There is a 36-pound weight differential. Bone Crusher Smith at 247, Mike Weaver at 211. Both of these guys, Sam, can punch, and they can both get you out with one shot. It is one day short of four years ago that they met for the first time, and Bone Crusher knocked out Mike Weaver in the first round. Bone Crusher Smith uses more combinations. That's what he talked about. He's, in, he's training. A good three-punch combination. A fifth punch sends Weaver down. He's up quickly. But a quick knockdown in this fight. That straight right hand sending Weaver down. I know it was a nice combination, Sam. He put the punches together beautifully. You're right about not blinking, Gil. This could be over in a hurry. Weaver backing off and Bone Crusher. Trying to land the big punches. But you have to watch Weaver. He's, he'll be dangerous, uh, Sam, until they say 10 over him. He can nail you at any time. And back with that big left hook. In other words, you all, can't... All blow by you, Bone Crusher, and he apologized. Uh, Sam, you just can't think offense with, with, the, with the Mike Weaver. At this point, Weaver not doing anything to keep Bone right, Crusher right, Smith right, off him. Hasn't done the thing since the opening bell, Sam. Bone Crusher trying to bang the body has gotten a good couple of shots in. Nice body shots by Bone Crusher. That's the first snappy punch that Mike Weaver threw. Looks like Bone Crusher has a pretty good game plan mapped out here. Again, a nice combination, Sam. Put three punches together. And there's Mike Weaver holding. He must be still hurt, Sam. He just doesn't seem to be reacting properly. He talked about being warm and being loose. He doesn't look loose at all, Gil. He's very unsure of himself. Well, he's, he's bone dry, Sam. Bone dry. Oh, good pounding to the body by Bone Crusher Smith. And Weaver has to back off. Mike Weaver, who has been notorious for slow starts. Well, he got stopped in one by, by Mike Dokes. Strange. That was a strange finish to that fight. End of round one. Weaver survives, though he is knocked down in that first round. Mike Weaver, who will be 38 years old on June the 14th. Had problems in his corner with the stool. They put the stool down on the legs, went in the water bucket. Spilled the water. Mike Weaver couldn't sit down. I tell you, move around, move around. Wasted some valuable seconds. 
Let's take, let's take a look at the ball question in action. Straight right hand, left hook, right hand, and another right hand. Five punch combinations, Sam, and landed three of them. Let's take a look at it again. You got it? Here's that straight right hand. He's on balance. Left hook, right hand. And balance is the key, Sam. That's when you throw those combinations. Mike Weaver. He says he continues to fight because he loves boxing. I don't know how much you can love it if you keep getting knocked down. Well, again, we mentioned, you know, he's he's such a slow starter. He got stopped by Bone Crusher in the first round last time. Mike Dokes knocked him out in one round. But he's going to have to start doing something to get Bone Crusher's respect. He just can't let him walk in and throw punches. And he's got that big left hook. I don't know what he's saving it for. Bone Crusher taking the lead. Weaver has been backing off since the opening bell. Good jab and a good left hook to the body. And Bone Crusher is throwing in combinations. And Weaver did try that left hook, Sam, but missed. Very good combinations by Bone Crusher Smith. And a nice faint before he threw a punch. We saw Bone Crusher Smith fight in December and again in February. In this is the best he's looked, Gil. Absolutely, Sam. Putting those punches together beautifully. But again, we know the knock on Bone Crush. He gets into the fifth or sixth round. He just runs out of gas. Maybe that's Weaver's plan. He had Ruddock down in the second round of their fight last summer. And Ruddock stopped him in the seventh round. Weaver seems to be breathing heavily already, Sam. It's only the second round. Weaver's got to find a way to, to just slow Bone Crusher's steady movement in, in. Well, he hasn't done a thing, Sam. And, and the Bone Crusher knows it up. He's not just walking in. He's fainting first, then he's getting rid of the punches. Quick uppercut that landed. That's really what Weaver has to do is get Bone Crusher's respect a little bit. Get him worried. Well, there it is the first time he showed some signs of life, Weaver. And Bone Crush is looking at the corner. Why should he be puzzled, Sam? He's had it all his own way. In the combinations, part of them blocked on the gloves by Weaver. Weaver steadily moving back and circling. And bone Crusher methodically moving in and taking the lead. First combination thrown by Weaver. Sam, we mentioned that Weaver has been inactive. The rust may come off as the rounds go by. Let's look and see what happens if this fight goes much further. Our both fighters looking slow. End of the second round. Old Crusher Smith back into his corner. And that's Jakes Morton who has been working with him. David Henry trained him down in North Carolina, up in the mountains. And Bobby Lewis, veteran trainer Bobby Lewis is working in the corner. Slide over to the right sometimes, people cut him off. You gotta cut him off. You let him get away from you. That's how come he's sliding away from you. Just slide over to the right. Sam, uh, Bobby Lewis is working with uh, Mike Weaver. Bobby's a well-respected trainer, trained fighters around New York, trained Ron Lyle, a lot of other good fighters. But I don't know where Bill Slayton is. Now, there's a good right hand. And Weaver coming out, firing now. A total change of plan for Mike Weaver. Wow. 
surprising Bone Crusher Smith. Well, that's what I, you know, Sam, we said you, Bone Crusher just couldn't think offense with Mike, with a Mike Weaver any time. Well, there he goes. I'm going it again. That staggered Weaver. Weaver smiling. Bone Crusher continues to bore in. Lands the couple of jabs. Sharp jabs by Bone Crusher Smith. They're stiff, Sam, is what they are. They're very strong jabs. 247 pounds behind him. Good right to the body by Smith. But uh, Weaver's weak spot is the chin, Sam. Most fighters I like to use to tell my... I used to tell my guys, go to the body, go to the body. But with Weaver, you hit him on the chin, and he does funny tricks with those legs. Very good condition, so he takes a good body punch. Weaver gets caught. The right-hand counter. Scheduled for 12. Sam, the last time that the uh, Bone Crusher Smith uh, fought in Madison Square Garden, he became champion of the world. He knocked out Tim Witherspoon in one round. Did not hold the title too long after that. Mike Tyson took it away from him. Good left hook to the body by Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher's. Had a good up and down attack, Gil. He's buried it well. He's gone to the body well. He's come upstairs. But he seems to be like he's pushing that jab out there now, Sam. It's strong, but it's a push jab. See, he's pushing Weaver back. I'd like to see him snap that jab a little more. And Weaver, but for two flurries, has continued to circle and back up. And you know, Sam, when you push a jab like that, you're open to a left hook counter, and that's Weaver's best punch. So, again, Weaver will be dangerous as long as he's in front of a phone crusher. Final seconds of round three. Weaver started quickly, but did not maintain the attack. And the end of the third. Mike Weaver he fought here at Madison Square Garden in 1979 when he fought Larry Holmes. He stopped in the 12th round. And what a fight that was, Sam. He had Larry Holmes out. He had him going. Holmes, to his credit, sucked it up, came back and stopped Mike Weaver. But that was a fight when Holmes was quite badly... He ran over to the ropes, the Holmes. It looked like he was going to quit. And Don King stood up and said, whatever he said, turn around and get out there. And uh, Holmes did and won the fight. And you know, there's a lot of strange things happened. Bone Crusher became champion of the world by accident. He was a late substitute, and there, there he, he knocked out with his in one round. Funny things happen in boxing. Damn. Set for round four. How have you scored the first three rounds? I've given the first three rounds to Bone Crusher with a 10-8 round in the first round. But again, Sam, from all our past experiences with Bone Crusher, the longer the fight goes, the worse it gets for Bone Crusher. with the crusher he keeps trying to use his strength and that's what tires you out they they said they're trying to work on his combinations to keep him from getting tired instead of loading up with one punch but they should also tell him inside to relax not try to muscle a guy that pushing is what really can tire you out apparently what they've also told him is every time weaver throws a combination come back with a counter right hand because that's what bone crusher has done and he's been successful with it. very effective with it yes his last fight, February 20th against Manuel de Almeida. Smith was constantly loading up, looking for one punch to stop his opponent like that. Now he wades in and works on combinations. Weaver backing off once again. Just 
keep wondering what is Weaver waiting for, Sam? He was effective when he threw that one combination. Seemed to snap out of his funk. But he's just walking around the ring. Again, it may be their plan to, to let Bone Crusher tire himself out. I think it could be. Left hook, but just a single punch by Weaver, and it seems as if every time he opens up, he pays a price for it. Hey, stop fighting. What Bone Crusher does when he fires back like that, he lets Weaver know that he's the boss. And it, I, I love the, the expression that they use in Great Britain. They say, show them who's the governor. <laughs> You're the governor, lad. Bone Crusher doing a good job of not letting Weaver get too far away from him. And Weaver, for the first time, throwing a couple of jabs, putting a couple of punches together. Final seconds of the fourth round. And a right hand lands. Weaver stunned a little bit by it. The bell round rang and sounded. Bone Crusher apparently didn't hear it because he threw a couple more punches. Weaver not hurt. Back into the corner of Bone Crusher Smith. Let's take a look at that last right hand just before the bell landed by Bone Crusher Smith. Good, solid right hand right on the button. stepping to the right and cutting him off. It seems as if Bone Crusher has been doing a lot of following rather than cutting the ring off. He has, Sam. He's just been walking in, walking in, and it gets slower and slower each round. This is round five. Weaver has not thrown anything or landed anything. And has bothered Smith in any way. It's a combination by Bone Crusher. See, he is with Bone Crusher. He's using that strength. He's trying to push right. Weaver against the ropes. And those are the things that tire him out. If you know he has a stamina problem, you've got to tell him, relax inside. Walk the guy around. Don't use yourself up. But what about the, the force of Bone Crusher leaning on Weaver? Does that bother Weaver? Oh, it certainly should. He's, he has such a... Uh, Bone Crusher has such a big weighting advantage in this fight. Well, you know, Weaver doesn't look fresh as a daisy either, Sam. If this fight continues and it goes a lot more rounds, they're going to look like they're fighting in, in sand or mud. You can see, you can see Bone Crusher now gasping for breath, breathing out of his mouth. And he's had everything his own way, and it's only the fifth round. Bone Crusher celebrating his 35th birthday yesterday. When I posed the question to Bone Crusher that I thought that this was a fight that was between two men who were over the hill and asked for his response, he said he's in his, he feels he's in his prime now. But you know, Bone Crusher, uh, when he did win the championship for the world from Witherspoon, was not an experienced fighter, uh, Sam. He hasn't fought that many good fighters. So. Whether he won the title by accident, but it was the big right hand that did it, which he's always had. But he may feel now that he's learned more about boxing, knows a little more, knows how to put the punches together, which he never could do before. But he's always had that stamina problem. He went to 12 rounds with Mike Tyson, and, and you know, they called him Bone Clutcher because he held for the entire right. fight, but he didn't drop dead from exhaustion the way he usually does. Weaver with some body shots. His father bone crusher enough to make him back off. Oh, no. Comes back just under the belt back, line. Back. Back. Bone 
Crusher still taking the lead. He's the governor. Weaver with an occasional snap of the jab. This fight, which was started out as a turtle pace, is slowed. But to this point, it seems as if Bone Crusher Smith is in total control as they end round five. for Bone Crusher Smith. Boy, look at that body. Boy, that Weaver. He's always been in great shape. You know, Sam, the fact that he's 211 pounds, if he can survive a little while longer, I think he can come on real strong down the stretch. Weaver has not fought since July 27th of last year when he fought here in New York and won a 10-round decision over Phil Brown in a very dull fight clutching and grabbing in that fight. Well, that's Brown is a very difficult guy to fight, Sam. You can't judge Mike Weaver off the Brown fight. Mike Weaver won the heavyweight title, the WBA heavyweight title in 1980. Successfully defended it against Eric Garcia, James Quick Tillis, and then lost it in 1982 to Michael Dokes. Is Bone Crusher smothering his punches on the inside? Yes, he is, Sam. He's in. Bone Crusher needs a little distance, especially to drop that right hand. When he gets inside, again, as I've been trying to say from the beginning, his punches aren't that effective. A Weaver takes a good punch to the body, and he's smothering his punches so he's not getting any leverage on him. He's not hurting Weaver, and he's taking some of that gas out of the tank. You know, if I was in the Weaver's corner down now, Sam, he'd be getting a, a little bit of a, a lecture from me. I mean, he's going to have to wake up a little bit. Look like he's interested in this fight. Stop yeah. bouncing around, move around. He's the smaller man. He doesn't have to just stay there and walk around with Bone Crusher. He doesn't have to fight Bone Crusher's pace. He can set his own pace, but he's not doing it up to this point. It will be interesting to see what happens in the next few rounds, Gil, whether... There is a turn, and Weaver does pick it up, and Bone Crusher slows down and runs out of gas. Weaver trying to work inside a little low with that left hand. Well, a, a Weaver not only would get a lecture from me, he's getting a lecture from the crowd right now. They don't like this action. Real slow motion. punch by Weaver on the break. There's a good snappy right hand by Bone Crusher. And most of it missed. It missed, but it was at least he had the snap in there, Sam. We haven't seen that in a while in a round or two. Yeah. Weaver on the move with a jab as we come to the end of round six. Skating down from the crowd here at Madison Square Garden. A little unhappy with a lack of action. Listen, you are not doing nothing. You stand there, you stand there, run, 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 run for what? Hold for him. what? Don't hold him. Hold him for what? Hold him for what? Deep you put him, you been a minute, hop, 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 hop. You throw him one, one bunch at a time. That's why he kind of with the right hand. You just 
And don't put the left hook behind it. And, then, and also put the left hook behind it. Turn the left hook over behind it. Turn the left hook behind it. Up. Deep. Up. Another one. Now come on, let's see what you're going to do. That's when right, you lose the left hook behind it. Well, we'll see if Mike Weaver listens. Well, I didn't have to run over to the corner, Sam. Bobby, Bobby Lewis gave him a lecture. Told him you're not doing anything. You're throwing one punch at a time. I haven't even seen him one punch at a time. Get those cameras back. Round seven. Scheduled for 12. Have you scored it through six? I, I've yeah. given Bone, Bone Crusher Smith every round just on the fact that the, he's been walking in. But, again, he's landed a few of the more solid punches. Had Weaver down. But... Uh, there's a nice snappy yeah. move by Bone Crusher Smith. Weaver trying to come back. The overhand rights have missed wildly by Weaver. Oh, sharp jab by Bone Crusher. Weaver was down to the first round. A right hand at the end of a five-punch combination sent him down. He was up quickly. Good right hand again by Bone Crusher. Now Bone Crusher, as you mentioned, Sammy, goes goes inside, smothers himself. He can't be effective in there. Needs a little room. When he gives himself a little room, Sam, there's plenty of power in those punches. First combination that Weaver has thrown in a while. Didn't seem to throw with any conviction, though, Sam. There's really no snap in the punch at all. Is a lot of that due to the inactivity, Gil? Well, again, he hasn't fought since last July, and he just seems to be so ring rusty in there, Sam. He's not with it. You know, Bone Crusher is, I've seen him do this before in fights. He keeps checking his eyes to see if he has a cut eye. I mean, you know, he's, he's very, very susceptible if he gets cut, he gets panicked. If he gets hit a couple of good punches, there was, an, again, another nice move by Bone Crusher. Didn't land the punch, but at least he had some life in him when he threw the punches. No question that Bone Crusher is throwing the harder punches. I think Bone Crusher's mad at himself now. All of a sudden, he woke up a little bit. But he lets Weaver yeah, slide like, away. Yeah. Good uppercut. really the best action of the fight Gil, in the last 30 seconds bone crusher was backing up as he threw that uh, right hand but again he tried to throw with a little snap Sam. he meant to do some damage final seconds of the seventh round scheduled for 12 in this one. Let's see what Jenks Morton has to say now. punches with some damage. There you go. Left hand, one, two. Nice straight, one, two. Here's the one he was pulling away with, Gil. <laughs> Think he thought he had it there. Mike Weaver. He's got to come on now. In my opinion, Sam, he can't win now unless he's going. Good right yeah. hand by the Bone Crusher. Weaver shaking, covering up. And Bone Crusher opening up and going for it. Weaver slips away. We've seen this in past fights with Bone Crusher early. He'll come out. 
throw a barrage of punches and then slow down for the remainder of the round. Well, as you mentioned, then he smothers himself, Sam. Let's watch here now. He's going to try to move Weaver against the ropes. Let's see if he punches when he has a little leverage or he gets smothered again. There's their inside again. Some redness under the right eye of Bone Crusher Smith. I'm waiting for that left hook of Weavers. I haven't, it just, it just hasn't thrown it all night long. And that was always his most effective punch. The only hit. Yeah. Now let's see if, if Bone Crusher throws again. He takes the distance away from himself, Sam. He waits the look. He should throw from right there. There's where he should throw that punch from. And suddenly it's Weaver who's beating Bone Crusher to the punch. Good jab by Mike Weaver. There again, ball crusher. Too close. See, takes himself inside. He can throw those punches from a little distance. Even if he hits Weaver on the shoulder or the arm, he's going to move him back. When he throws, he has a little distance on his punches. Little left hook by Mike Weaver inside. And since that opening flurry, Bone Crusher hasn't done much. Give him a short little left hook, two good little left hooks, and a big left hook, and another one. Weaver taking some good punches from Bone Crusher. That's going to take a lot out of the Bone Crusher, though, Sam. We both know that. Bone Crusher being urged to come on, took a left hook right on the belt line. Best left hook of the fight by Mike Weaver. Use that hook a little bit now, Sam Weaver is. I think this is the best round that Weaver has had yet. He's done a little something. He's thrown a few jabs. He's thrown a few hooks. He's done something other than just keep circling away and absorb punishment. End of round eight. Listen to me. You got the fight. Fighting bread. You better chase the hell. Shit, my daughter's ready to take you. Water. Okay. You get out back in the coffee pot. Let's let's take a look at Mike Weaver. This is the most solid left hook that he landed in the fight. Of course, it was a little bit below the A in Spartan Sam, but at least it had plenty of snap. I think both fighters have been guilty of throwing some low blows. Set for round nine, scheduled for 12 for the WBA Americas Heavyweight Championship. Later on, Michael Dunks and Razor Ruddick are fighting for the WBA Intercontinental Championship. And how do you like that? In the meanwhile, Bobby Lewis and Mike Weaver's corner said, if you don't want to fight, let me know. Some swelling over the left eye of Bone Crusher Smith now. Another little left hook by Mike Weaver. Another left hook by Mike Weaver. Finally getting rid of that hook a little bit. In my opinion, Sam, all Bone Crusher has to do is survive now. I would agree with you, really. I thought Weaver showed signs of coming on a little bit. You know, Sam, we've, I've, uh, Bone Crusher never reacts right when you start to punish him. He seems to panic. He looks at his corner. He's upset and motion to the referee, upset about the head of Mike Weaver hitting him. You see Weaver leaning forward constantly, and Bone Crusher has been hit with the head. A couple of accidental butts. Now Weaver is moving forward for the first time in the fight. Here Bone, comes. Bone Crusher just planting himself and using his strength to push Weaver off.
He's pushing him off, and this is what right, takes the stamina out of Bone Crush. If they're telling him to push him off, push him off, he just doesn't have that kind of stamina. He has the, the size and the bulk. Straight right hand. Nice combination by Bone Crusher. He mixed it up, finished with a right hand body. Oh, Michael. Another left hook by Bone Crusher. Which followed two body shots from Weaver. That were good ones. He should throw it from there, Bone Crusher. There he smothers himself again. I think he's tired, Gil. Oh, we, we know he's tired, Sam. Good three-punch combination by Bone Crusher. The end of the ninth round. Jake Morton steps in. Sam, everybody that I told in the beginning of the fight not to blink. I want to tell them all it's okay to blink. It's okay. But they had their eyes open all night. All that time. How do you have it scored, Gil? Oh, I, it, it's, to me, Sam, Weaver can only win uh, by a knockout. I gave him one round even, and that's it. I gave Weaver the eighth round. I thought he fought pretty well in the ninth, but Bone Crusher came on. Now Weaver opens up with a right hand. Bone Crusher is, uh, seems to punch a lot better when Weaver is coming to him. Throws that short little left hook. But again, you notice that Bone Crusher is not uh, chasing Weaver. Weaver is now the guy that's forcing the action. He's forcing Bone Crusher to work. You know, may maybe Weaver was thinking of, uh, of his fight with John Tate, where he was hopelessly out of the fight. And the last round landed that big left hook and stiffened uh, John Tate. That was in the 15th round. Right, break out, and Sam, he was so far out of the fight. Oh, good left hook by Bone Crusher lands. And Bone Crusher following up with some good body shots. Well, you know, Bone Crusher said he's better now than he ever than he ever was, Sam. He's showing me better combinations than he's ever thrown in his entire life. He certainly worked on them. The thing to remember about Weaver Gill, the, the John Tate fight was 10 years ago. And I don't know if he can bring back the memories of 10 years, bring back the power that he had then. That, uh, that left hook of uh, Bone Crush is when Weaver comes to him, is very, very effective. Here comes Weaver to him again, Sam. First nine rounds, you never saw, first eight rounds, you never saw Weaver taking the lead. But he is coming at the bone crusher now. Let's see if he comes again. Yeah, there he comes. No. Nope. Bone crusher trying to keep Weaver off him with the jab. And there, bone crusher. Has he had an argument with himself that time. He said, should I throw a combination or take a rest? He decided to take a rest. A lot of swelling over the left eye of Bone Crusher Smith now. Well, they've been working with that inspo, uh, Sam. They're doing a good job on Bone Crusher's eyes. There's a good right hand straight. That's what he needs. He has to throw it from that distance. Doesn't have to smother himself every time. 
Look at that snake, the bone crusher. Weaver loading up with the right hand. Well, that's what he has to do, Sam. Has to try to throw the home run ball. He's got no other chance in this fight. Final seconds of the 10th round. And Bone Crusher Smith. Looking tired. The thing that's saving Bone Crusher is the fact that Weaver is not precious a daisy either, Sam. Take a look at this action. Here's that right hand, that chopping right hand by the bone crusher. Good left hook. That left hook's been effective, Sam. And it is again. Doubled it up. That was the way he was fighting early in this fight, but he did put the combinations oh. together very well. Weaver was down in the first round. Since then, Bone Crusher has been in control, a slow-paced fight. Mike Weaver has not had many big moments in this fight. You see, Bone Crusher, anytime he gets hit, Sammy, he just does not react properly. Right, right. Looks to right. brush his glove against his eye to see if he's been damaged. Look, there he's been, he must have got a thumb in the eye, Sam. That right eye, he's blinking that right eye. Already the left eye is swollen. Weaver loading up with that overhand right. The bone crusher bangs with the left hook. What is he trying to tell? What is he trying to tell Weaver, Sam, that he's the what? The governor. He's the governor. You got it, Sam. <laughs> Look at that snappy left hook by a bone crusher. Very unusual for him to late round in a fight. You know, remember in the Tyson fight, he hurt Tyson in the last round of the fight, and he had to live with that because for the first 11 rounds, he seemed to be really afraid. You, hate, you don't like to say that the fight is afraid, uh, but he seemed to be afraid of Tyson. And when he finally nailed him in the last round, he had to say to himself, why didn't I try to take chances earlier? He spent 11 rounds trying to survive in that fight, and by the 12th round, he realized he could have put up a better fight. Shame to see two former champions boot Sam. Well, you know, there's always great anticipation amongst fans, hoping to see a lot of action, big bombs being thrown by the heavyweights. But I think as we pointed out right from the beginning, we're seeing two fighters who are way past their prime, hanging on in an era of boxing in which uh, older fighters are willing to stay around and absorb punishment. Looking for that uh, shot at a big payday and a chance for a big title. And Bone Crusher has always been a, a popular guy, well liked. Oh, he's a terrific guy, Sam. The only college graduate heavyweight champion of the world, Bone Crusher Smith. And people, uh, you know, he just feels that he can stay in there because people are willing to accept him as long as he can put up a decent show and maybe get that that shot with the the fact that he has the label of former champion. Well, oh, Sam, the one thing we got to we can't take away from him. He's been a winner. Good combination by Bone Crusher and the end of round 11.
James Morton, who worked very closely with Sugar Ray Leonard for so many years. Sam, you looked at my score time. You said, what is wrong with this guy? Gave them out to Weaver. But Weaver was landing a lot of short little punches inside. It was bothering Bone Crush. I think Bone Crusher took a little vacation for the last 10 seconds. Be first all the time, all the time. How you feel? Last round. Last round. Come on, Mike. Throw them. He's tired, man. Take him out. Well, Bobby Lewis said be first all the time to Mike Weaver. Let's see if we have another John Tate situation. Well, the reminder to Bone Crusher was that this fight is his and not to take any chances. Unofficially, he is way ahead. I've given Mike Weaver one round. And they gave Bone Crusher a two-point round in the first. And they told Bone Crusher not to take any chances. He came out with more fire than he has in the last seven rounds. Well, he tends to start each round with the flurry. Look, Sam. Yeah. Weaver doesn't seem to have too much left in the gas tank, Gil. Well, that's what you had mentioned, Sam. You had that big guy leaning on you for 12 rounds, you know. He's winging them, though. Well, that overhand punch coming much more slowly. And Bone Crusher doing a good job of smothering Weaver's punches here. Tying him up, holding him, sticking his big arms up to block those punches. Bone Crusher left himself wide open that time, Sam. Threw a one-two, and he's so tired that he couldn't recover. Those are those short little punches that I was mentioning that Weaver's throwing, Sam. They don't look effective, but they're bothering the bone crusher. Got a knee in there. Weaver was off balance after missing the right hand. Oh, they, but they both threw right hands, uh, Sam. If Weaver's would have landed, we may have seen another John Tate situation. Bone crusher's got to use that jab now. Short punches. But he doesn't want to take a chance to get that chin up in the end, get nailed. Still to come, the WBA lightweight championship. Edwin Rosario defending against Juan Nazario. And then Michael Dokes and Razor Ruddock. Two of the top contenders in the heavyweight division. Ruddock number two, Dokes number three. I have to give Bone Crusher credit, Sam. At least he's still trying to put his punches together. Yeah. And I think, quite frankly, Gil, he's had better stamina in this fight than in previous fights where we saw him go only six or seven rounds. I've seen improvement in bone crusher in this fight. I have too, Sam. Even now he's throwing some meaningful punches. Weaver's got to back off. Bone crusher trying to finish. Good left hook. There's an improvement with bone crusher right there. To have that much energy left in the 12th round of a fight, Sam. Gotta have to give him credit. Pretty good finish for bone crusher. He looks well spent. But it looks like he has fought his way to victory. And still banging away at the final bell is Bone Crusher Smith. Well, at 35 years old, Bone Crusher what you saying, showing man? signs of second life in his boxing career. Last July was the last time Mike Weaver fought, and a lot of that rust showed. Bone Crusher, last July, lost to Razor Ruddock. He was stopped in the seventh round, but since then, had four fights. That's that right, made a Sam. difference. Again, I mentioned, I like these active fighters. That's the one advantage that Dokes is going to have against Ruddock. He's been active. Now let's take a look at this flurry. Short right hand, short left hook. Bone Crusher didn't have much room but he kept throwing punches. Right, putting them together. Go to show you, the corner told him don't take any chances, Sam. He went right out and did what he wanted to do. And he missed a couple of left hooks that could have been a difference. Could have had him out of there. Well, I guess he felt being on the offensive was better than being on the defensive. 
And Bone Crusher. Well, it's always better to give than to receive. <laughs> yes, we've been boxing, that. yes. I understand that. Mike Weaver. He'll be 38 years old in two months. And certainly far from the fighter that he used to be, that he once was when he was at the top in the early 80s. Cards have been collected. Let's get the official announcement from ring announcer Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, the scoring by points as follows. Judge Billy Costello observed the fight, 118-107. Judge Barbara Perez, she scored 118-109. And Judge Harold Letterman, he observed it at 117, 110. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and the brand new WBA America's Heavyweight Champion, James Bone Crusher Smith. Not much doubt about it. The Bone Crusher has won a belt. And there it is for Mike Weaver. It could be the end of the line. He certainly has to think about his future. Not a strong showing for Mike Weaver. Bone Crusher Smith in a dominant performance between two veterans of the ring, who, as we've mentioned several times, look to be well past their prime. But Bone Crusher game from the opening bell. And early in the fight, he had Weaver down. This is back in the first round in a five-punch combina five combination by Bone Crusher. And the fifth one is that right hand, and Weaver went down. He was up quickly and did not go down again in the, rema the remainder of the fight. But for the Bone Crusher, a one-sided unanimous decision victory. Well, officially, from our vantage point, we gave Mike Weaver one round, maybe two at most. A 35-year-old James Bone Crusher Smith from North Carolina, hoping to move into the top 10 in the world rankings and hoping for one more shot at a title. Gil Clancy's in the ring with a Bone Crusher. Let's go to Gil. Well, Bone Crusher, congratulations. You know, you said you don't get older, you get better. And to me, you look a lot better. Why are you better? Well, we've been working up in the mountains. Uh, we still we got a lot of work to do. We want to stay very busy. Uh, we trained very hard. Mike Weaver's a very good fighter, very strong. And uh, he heard with some shots, and I heard it with some shots. But uh, I'm glad to be the winner. You know, I always like active fighters, Bone Crusher. You have been an active guy. You showed us a lot today. You know, you've always had a stamina problem. Got a little tired in the middle of the fight, but you still had plenty of energy left in that last round. Last round, we came back very strong, and uh, we figured it was a close fight. But uh, there again, we're going right back in the gym, and hopefully our promoter will get us right back uh, with another fight soon. We want the winner or the loser of this fight here, or George Foreman. We want to stay very busy. We want to keep right on fight, stay in shape until we retire. George Foreman. I'd like to see that Foreman fight, the Bone Crusher. That would be a heck of a fight. Congratulations again, new champion. Congratulations. Now let's go back to Sam Rosen at ringside. Thank you, Gil, and congratulations to the Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher Smith winning a unanimous decision over Mike Hercules Weaver. And now as we await the upcoming WBA lightweight championship bout, let's go back to Bruce Beck.